Hello and welcome to Director's Choice, the channel where we explore the hidden secrets and theories behind some of the biggest movies of all time. Today, we're diving into the world of Gotham City with the 1995 blockbuster hit, Batman Forever. Batman! With a star-studded cast including Val Kilmer as Batman, Tommy Lee Jones as Two-Face, and Jim Carrey as the Riddler, Batman Forever was a critical and commercial success. But there's much more to this movie than meets the eye. Join us as we explore 15 theories related to Batman Forever and uncover the hidden depths of this beloved superhero classic. Who the hell are you? Just a friend. But you can call me... The Riddler. Our first theory is that the Riddler's split personality is a result of trauma from his abusive father. The Riddler, or Edward Nigma as he was once known, suffered from severe childhood trauma which led to him developing a dissociative identity disorder. The Riddler persona was created as a coping mechanism for Edward to deal with his pain. This theory is supported by the scene in which the Riddler recalls his father's angry outbursts. The scene is shot in a claustrophobic close-up, emphasizing the trauma that Edward experienced as a child. The Riddler's flamboyant costume, with its green jumpsuit, bowler hat, and question marks, is also a manifestation of Edward's repressed desires. By creating the Riddler, Edward is able to express himself in a way that he never could as himself. This theory adds an extra layer of depth to the Riddler's character, and shows how trauma can have a lasting impact on a person's psyche. Hey, two things. Show me how to punch a guy! It's dirt simple, my boy. Ball up the fist, reach way back, and assert yourself. Our next theory is that Two-Face's obsession with Chance is a result of his traumatic loss of his wife. After his wife was killed, Harvey Dent, the former district attorney of Gotham City, became disillusioned with the idea of justice and morality. This trauma led him to believe that everything is ultimately up to chance, leading him to rely on his coin flips to make decisions. This theory is supported by the fact that Two-Face's coin is a symbol of his struggle with good and evil. By flipping the coin, Two-Face believes that he is removing any personal responsibility for his actions. This theory also adds an extra layer of tragedy to Two-Face's character, showing how one traumatic event can alter a person's entire world. Tell me, Doctor. Do you like the circus? Our third theory is that the circus theme throughout the movie is a nod to the Joker's past as a circus clown, as seen in some comic book storylines. This theme is also used to represent duality, as the circus is both a place of wonder and a place of danger. The theme of duality is further reinforced by the fact that the climax of the movie takes place in a circus tent. The location is used to emphasize the theme of duality, as well as to showcase the Riddler's love of puzzles and games. The use of the circus theme is a clever nod to the larger Batman mythology, and adds an extra layer of depth to the movie's visual language. Our fourth theory is that the use of neon lighting in the movie represents the chaotic nature of Gotham City, as well as the flashy and showy personalities of the Riddler and Two-Face. The use of neon lighting is particularly evident in the Riddler's lair, which is decorated with brightly colored neon tubes arranged in puzzle-like patterns. This visual style adds to the movie's overall sense of spectacle and excitement, and helps to create a vivid and memorable world for the audience to immerse themselves in. Our fifth theory is that the design of the Batmobile was influenced by the 1966 Batman TV series, which had a more campy and colorful approach to the character. The design was also meant to be more toy-friendly and appealing to children, as evidenced by the fact that toy versions of the Batmobile were released alongside the movie. The design of the Batmobile is a quintessential part of the Batman mythology and has been reinvented and reimagined countless times over the years. In Batman Forever, the Batmobile is a sleek and futuristic vehicle that perfectly encapsulates the movie's sense of fun and adventure. R. What's that stand for? Robin. 
Our sixth theory is that the inclusion of Robin was meant to appeal to a younger audience, as well as to set up potential sequels featuring the character. However, the portrayal of Robin in the movie is somewhat darker than in previous adaptations, with the character grappling with his own trauma of losing his family. The inclusion of Robin adds an extra layer of complexity to the movie's narrative, and helps to establish a dynamic partnership between Batman and his young ward. The character is played with energy and enthusiasm by Chris O'Donnell, and provides a welcome dose of humor and heart to the movie. Our seventh theory is that Batman's struggles with trust and control stem from his childhood trauma of losing his parents. This trauma led him to become hypervigilant and reluctant to trust others. This theme is explored throughout the movie, especially in his interactions with Robin and Dr. Chase Meridian, both of whom challenge Batman's need for control. This theme adds an extra layer of complexity to Batman's character, showing how his traumatic past continues to affect his behavior and relationships. It also helps to humanize the character and make him more relatable to the audience. I'm Chase Meridian. Abnormal psychology, multiple personalities. I read your work. Doctor, Chase Meridian's character arc. Our eighth theory is that the character of Dr. Chase Meridian was originally intended to be a villain, as evidenced by some of her lines in earlier drafts of the script. However, the role was changed during filming to make her a love interest for Batman. This change may have been made in response to criticism of previous Batman movies for their lack of compelling romantic subplots. Dr. Chase Meridian, played by Nicole Kidman, is a psychiatrist who becomes fascinated with Batman and his alter ego, Bruce Wayne. Her character provides an interesting counterpoint to Batman's stoic and unemotional demeanor, and helps to add an extra layer of depth to the movie's romantic subplot. Like the jacket? It keeps me safe when I'm jogging at night. Our ninth theory is that the Riddler's costume was indeed inspired by the classic comic book version of the character, which features a green jumpsuit with question marks and a bowler hat. The costume was also meant to be a more flamboyant and over-the-top version of Edward Nigma's outfit, emphasizing the contrast between the two personalities. The Riddler's costume is one of the most iconic elements of the movie and perfectly captures the character's flamboyant and eccentric personality. The costume is a testament to the movie's commitment to honoring the larger Batman mythology, while also putting its own unique spin on the character. Our tenth theory is that Two-Face's coin is a symbol of his struggle with good and evil. By flipping the coin, Two-Face believes that he is removing any personal responsibility for his actions. This adds an extra layer of complexity to the character, showing how trauma can lead to a distorted sense of morality. The use of the coin as a decision-making tool also reinforces the theme of chance, which is a major motif throughout the movie. This theme is used to great effect in the movie's climactic battle, in which Batman and Robin must rely on their skills and instincts to defeat Two-Face, and the Riddler. Alfred. I saw the signal, sir. All is ready. Commissioner Gordon? He's at home. I sent the signal. Our eleventh theory is that the bat signal is indeed a symbol of hope for the citizens of Gotham City, as it represents their trust in Batman to protect them from danger. The symbol is also an iconic part of the Batman mythology dating back to the character's earliest appearances in comic books. The bat signal is used to great effect in Batman Forever, both as a symbol of hope and as a tool for Batman to communicate with the police. The bat signal also serves as a visual reminder of Batman's enduring legacy and his commitment to protecting the people of Gotham City. Riddle me this, riddle me that. Who's afraid of the big black our twelfth theory is that the climax of the movie takes place in a circus tent to emphasize the theme of duality, as well as to showcase the Riddler's love of puzzles and games. The location is also meant to be in homage to the classic Batman TV series, which often featured Batman and his allies battling villains in circus-themed environments. 
The circus tent is a visually stunning location, filled with bright colors and surreal imagery. The use of the tent also reinforces the movie's themes of duality and chance, as Batman and Robin must rely on their wits and instincts to navigate the maze-like environment and defeat their enemies. Wait a minute, that's not Batman. What are you talking about? That's Bat Boy. <laughs> Our 13th theory is that the use of color in the movie, such as the green and purple of the Riddler's costume, represents the contrasting forces of good and evil. The use of red and blue in Batman's costume and Robin's costume also represents duality, as well as their contrasting personalities. The use of color is a striking visual element in Batman Forever and helps to emphasize the movie's themes of duality and contrast. The use of color also helps to create a sense of visual excitement and spectacle in keeping with the movie's overall tone. You're looking at your new partner. No. Bruce, whenever you go out at night, I'll be watching. And wherever Batman goes, I'm gonna be right beside him. Our 14th theory is that the inclusion of Robin was meant to set up a potential spin-off movie featuring the character, which unfortunately never materialized. However, the character's inclusion in the movie was a significant departure from previous Batman adaptations, which had largely focused on Batman as a solitary hero. Robin's character arc in the movie is particularly interesting, as he struggles to come to terms with his own trauma and his desire to help Batman fight crime. The character adds an extra layer of emotional depth to the movie and helps to establish a strong bond between Batman and his young ward. Our 15th theory is that the Riddler's lair, with its bizarre and surreal decorations and themes, is indeed a visual representation of his fragmented mind. The lair is filled with puzzles, optical illusions, and other visual tricks, all of which are designed to challenge and confuse Batman and his allies. The Riddler's lair is one of the most memorable locations in the movie, and perfectly encapsulates the character's eccentric and obsessive personality. The lair also serves as a visual representation of the Riddler's descent into madness, as he becomes increasingly fixated on proving his superiority over Batman. You see, I'm both Bruce Wayne and Batman. Not because I have to be. Now, because I choose to be. And there you have it, 15 theories related to Batman Forever, the 1995 blockbuster hit that remains a beloved classic to this day. We hope you enjoyed this deep dive into the hidden secrets and nuances of the movie, and that it gave you a greater appreciation for the rich and complex world of Batman. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe to Director's Choice for more movie related content.